This is an introduction to the power operator in Dialog EPL. The power operator is used to repeat several times a given function. For example, here we have 5 multiplied 3 times by the number 2. If we ask the answer, we get, in this case, 40. But using the power operator, we could have asked to multiply three times the number 5 by 2. Same answer. This can also be applied to your own function. For example, here we have the function which adds 1 to the double of the argument. Applying the function once, twice, thrice, four times. This is the same as doing f applied four times to the number 6. We get the same answer. We can also assign function f power 4 a different name. In this case, we call it f4. And we can use that function just like any other function. One of the practical uses of the power operator is to do conditional evaluation. For example, you may want to apply a function under a certain condition only. If the condition is true, we apply the function. If the condition is false, we do not apply the function. Notice that here, in order to make a difference between the operand and the argument, I put something in between. Here I put the function identity, which is represented by function plus here. But I could also have used function pass, which is represented by the right tack function. Again, this is only to make a difference between the operand of the operator and the argument of the derived function. If you were in a function, this would be the same as doing I assign a result. If the condition is true, then apply the function and terminate. Here's an example for people with math background. The golden number is given by this formula, which in APL is represented by this. This number can also be computed by a function, which is the repeated application of the expression here. So if I apply it once, I get that number. Apply it twice, I get a closer approximation. Three times? So if I now apply this function between these two numbers, this is basically repeating what I did here. I get the number two. If I do it again for the three that we had here, and again for the 4, we can see that I'm getting the same numbers here. In fact, if I use scan instead of compress, we can see that I'm getting closer and closer all the time. If I do it many more times, we can see that the number I am getting here is very close to the number I was getting here, which we can repeat. So the two numbers here are getting closer and closer. If I define f to be this function, I can apply f and I get the same result. I can apply f seven times, and I get the result. I can apply it 99 times, and I get the result identical. Now, in the case here, we didn't know how many times we had to repeat the expression. We can ask APL to stop whenever they are equal. So I can say, apply function f and stop whenever they are equal. Because now the operand is a function, I do not need to insert another function between the operand and the argument. I can remove the pass function. Here's some application. A couple of guys a while back invented a method to find the zero of functions that were difficult to evaluate. For example, if we have a function here in red, and we're trying to figure out where it actually intercepts the x-axis, where it is zero, then what we can do is take the tangent at any point close to the zero. That gets us closer to the real zero. And then we evaluate tangent at this point, which brings us a little bit closer, then re-evaluate, which gives us a little bit closer, and so on and so on, until we reach where the function equals zero. Of course, looking at the graph of f is going to give us an idea where to start. This may not always be possible. So in math terms, what we are seeing is the next point is the current point minus the value we have now 
at the current point divided by the tangent at that point. So that gives us the second part. And then we compute the third point, which is the same thing. From the second point, we subtract the value of f at that point divided by the tangent or the derivative at that point, and so on and so on. So this will generate a series of numbers that will get closer and closer to the real value. This technique is called the mutant raphson method. For example, let's try to find the square root of 5 by using the formula f of x is x exponent 2 minus 5. So the derivative of f is 2 times n. And the next point is going to be given by the current point minus f applied to that point divided by the derivative of f at the same point. So let's define f and f prime, which is the derivative, and the next point, which is going to be given by the value of our point minus f of that point divided by the derivative at that point. So let's start at 2. Okay. Twice. Let's do it five times. Let's do it until it doesn't change. Hmm. This looks like we found it. Here's another example. This one is a little bit more complicated. We want to find out where x is equal to the cosine of x. To give us an idea, this is what the function looks like. So we have x, the cosine of x, and we want to know where they meet. So it's going to be somewhere in that area. In other words, the function x minus the cosine of x, and we want to find where f is equal to 0. So let's define f, its derivative, the next position, starting at 1. Okay. Second time, 5 times. In fact, we don't even need to try 5 times. 4 would have been enough. So now we've asked APL to do it until it doesn't change. And if we compare with 4 times, we see that the result was achieved already. So 4 times to, to find the result. Okay, here's the last example. This one is a little bit more complicated. We have this function here, and we want to find where it is 0. So its derivative will be 3 times x squared plus 5. So now if we try start at the cube root of 3 and do it until it is equal, here's the result. This is where the function is equal to 0. And if we apply f to that number, we see that we're very close to 0. Now let's do something that you're more likely to need in real life. Here we have the function that removes the leading characters. Okay, if we apply that function to that string here, we remove the leading blanks, flip it around, remove the leading blanks, which is going to be at the end at this point, and flip it around again. And just for the sake of the example, I will append a character at the end to prove that the blanks have been removed. All the blanks that were here have been removed, and all the blanks that were at the end have been removed because we've appended a exclamation mark at the end. So this expression works. Now here we can try to create the function trim, which applies remove the leading blanks before flipping it, and do this twice. So the power operator applies twice to its function on the left, and the function on the left is flip after removing the leading blanks. So just like here, remove the leading blanks, flips, remove the leading blanks, flips again. So this is done twice. And if we apply the function again, same result. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little video. See you later.